club. Who gets on to international kickboxing and long time champion? Fully committed Japan. Getting back elbow there. So for those of you who don't know, that is Lurzila Phuket top team, one of the greatest Muay Thai fighters alive and multiple time world champion. Last week, I got the chance to train with him at a seminar he was doing at Muay Thai ATX. Shout out to Coach Alex. We covered a lot of his tactics that he uses in his signature tricky style. Now when I say tricky style, what I mean is Lurzila is a master of psychology. He deceives his opponents into thinking he's somewhere that he's not, into putting their guards somewhere that they shouldn't be, and hitting them where they least expect it. All tactics that make him an extremely effective, deceptive fighter, and something that I try to emulate with my own style. It was a lot of fun, and I really appreciate getting that opportunity. But more than that, I got the chance to spar with him, and I caught it on video. So, today what we're going to do is watch that video, I'm going to break it down, let you guys know what I did wrong, what I did right, and what I learned from this amazing champion. But before we move on, I would really appreciate it if you guys went ahead and subscribed. That support really does help me out, it helps me keep making these videos week after week. Hitting play now. So walk out. We touch gloves and right out the gate, he fires that roundhouse kick at me. What he's doing is trying to measure how I'm going to react. This is actually a really cool tactic you can use in your sparring, but be careful because sometimes it'll catch your opponents off guard. But essentially what you're doing is you're trying to see, are you going to run away from this shot? Are you going to eat it? Or are you going to counter it? Those three reactions are going to tell you a lot about the person you're dealing with. If they run away, that means they probably don't want to be in that sparring session at all. If they eat it, that means they either don't know what they're doing or they just won't prepare for it. But if they counter it, it means they are ready from the get-go and maybe they've already got a plan of attack or they're being very jumpy. Either way, it tells you a lot about the person you're sparring with. In this case, he fired it off to see what I was going to do. I fired off a roundhouse kick. It didn't land, but he does know when he fires something, I'm going to send it back to him. Here we trade hands and it looks like I'm throwing a lazy jab. I'm actually not. I threw my jab in knowing he was going to counter with his own jab. This is a common setup for me. I bring the jab back and then throw my left hook or overhand depending on how high his shoulder is. There I throw my own kick. Didn't work. He caught that one. Could have swept me but didn't. So thank you for that one. And here I see my first success with the kick. Throwing an inside low kick. So now I know I have success with the inside low kick. I'm going to try more of it. But eventually it's going to peter off and you'll see when that moment is. So he fires off another roundhouse kick, this time I counter with a cross. There's a failed spinning attempt. If you're going to try spinning kicks on your opponents, make sure you set them up properly. Nothing I've done so far has taught him that he needs to respect my regular kicks, so when I go for the spin, he's just gone. Here he's ramping up the speed a little bit. Here his overhand connects with my face. It was super fast, not hard at all, but it did tell me if he wanted to, he could have taken me out there. So there, that's the moment when I decide I'm going to stop throwing the inside low kicks. He didn't get that memo, so he's just chopping up my legs at this point. But I'm not eating them for no reason. I'm trying to hunt for a particular range. If this was a competition, I would definitely be down in points right now, because I'm trying to walk in so I can throw my sidekick. And unfortunately, it didn't work there, but I did threaten with it. And there's the big dunk. So he caught my leg, lifted it up, and walked me backwards. Essentially what he's doing is make my balance fall behind me until I have no choice but to roll or fall on my head. He was nice enough to let go of my leg so I could roll away, but if we're talking about a fight, he could have dropped me straight on my head. That is totally legal. So one of the things we worked on in the seminar is kicking out your opponent's leg while they're kicking at you. And I wanted to show him that I was paying attention and that I learned it. So I was letting him kick me again because I was trying to figure out the timing of his kicks. When I finally did, there I come with a side kick to the posting leg. That little nod from him tells me he appreciated me doing that. So here, you see that I'm putting my glove on top of his. What I'm doing at this point is stalling, because right now I realize I think he wants to clinch me. And I really don't want to get in a clinch match with him. I'm not good at clinching to begin with, but I'm definitely not going to stand a chance against him. So what I'm doing right now is not so much trying to push him away, but I'm trying to push myself away from him. 
But because of that hesitancy, because I was showing him that I was afraid, he starts eating me up at this point. Also, you know you're a success when you're wearing a tank top with you on it wearing multiple championship belts. Shin on shin collision is not something you want to do. It hurts like crazy, and if you don't have conditioned bones, it could actually break something. So that's why we train and spar in our shin guards. Just in case something like that happens, nobody gets hurt. So make sure you have a good pair of shin guards when you're sparring. And now, we get into the fight that I want to have. Because like I said before, I'm naturally a counterfighter, and this man is the king of counterfighting. So at this point, he and I are just baiting each other in. I'm throwing a jab, he's countering with his own shot, he's throwing a shot, I'm countering back. This is the most fun type of sparring for me. Is it necessarily entertaining for an audience? No. But for the two of us, I can tell we're having a lot of fun. Something you might have noticed is that I'm shifting from my left forward stance to my right forward stance. And in these videos, I tend to advocate not switching your stances while you're learning. At this point, I've had plenty of experience sparring, and I'm just about as comfortable in my left forward stance as I'm in the right forward stance. So I actually like switching my stances a lot when I spar because it can mess up your opponent's timing a lot. They're used to you standing one way and suddenly you switch it. But you have to be comfortable in both stances. If he figured out that I wasn't good in my right forward stance, that could have been it for me. So, master one stance, then play with the other one, and then learn how to switch them up as you see fit. There's another failed spinning attempt, but I did land two clean kicks beforehand. Probably should have done that rather than try to spin. He and I are playing at such a low intensity that nobody's getting hurt. Even if all these strikes landed clean on their targets, neither one of us would be hurt. Because there's a difference between intensity and commitment. Intensity means if my shot lands, it's gonna take you out. Commitment means my shot is gonna land, but I'm not gonna put anything behind it. I'm just gonna let my hand or my foot land where it needs to so that you know I could hurt you. So you could be sparring every single day if you have good commitment but low intensity. Now, if you're a fighter, you definitely wanna increase the intensity every once in a while. But if you're training just for fun or self-defense, then you wanna be doing lots of low intensity, high commitment sparring. There's no reason you should be having all out wars in your sparring. And there's no reason you should be sparring just once a week because you get hurt every time you spar. You should be able to spar at the end of every single one of your classes. One of the things that I was really surprised by was how much Lurzilla moves like a karate fighter. I wasn't expecting that. I thought he was gonna move like the most traditional looking high fighter. Granted, I've already seen plenty of his fights, but watching his footwork, watching the way he breaks down the way he moves, it's almost exactly the way we do this in karate and kaiju kembo. What that tells me is he's able to incorporate the philosophies and footwork methods that we have in other martial arts into his own game. It's still Muay Thai, it's still distinctively Muay Thai, but he's adopted the movements from other martial arts. And that's the way your training should be. You should take what's useful and make it work for you. At this point, he's dropped his hands completely. He's trying to bait me into a big swing, and I'm not gonna fall for it. We're nearing the end of the round, and here comes my proudest moment from this entire sparring session. I fake this roundhouse kick. He thinks it's gonna go to his leg or to his head, so he guards up for it. I switched it over the last second. Boom, side kick. Did he give that to me? Yeah. Did he fall over so I feel awesome? Yes, and I appreciate that. But the fact remained, it still did land. And once again, there's such a low level of intensity here that I was able to pull back that kick before it actually hit him. So honestly, this was one of the most fun sparring sessions I've ever had in my life. When you first get started sparring, it feels like a fight and you think it has to be, but it doesn't. As you get more experience, as you get more comfortable, you learn that it's just an enhanced, accelerated learning session. So when you're going against someone like this, someone who outclasses you by just a bajillion miles, you can actually learn a lot as long as you keep your mind open and walk in with the attitude knowing I'm gonna get hit, I'm gonna get swept, but he's trying to show me something. Getting to work with someone of his level is not something a lot of people get to do, so I wanna say thank you to Lurzilla, thank you to Muay Thai ATX, hopefully we can do another seminar sometime. All right, so that was my video, sparring with Lurzilla. I know I must sound like a broken record by now, but I really do appreciate getting the chance to learn from someone like him. He's an amazing fighter and he's obviously an incredible martial artist. Like I said, with this channel, we try to take a holistic look at all martial arts. We're not just looking at karate, we're not just looking at Muay Thai, we're not just looking at Kaiju Kembo, we're looking at all of it and seeing how we can use it to apply to our self-defense training. So, if you're looking for a channel that combines the practicality of combat sports, the reality of self-defense, and the fun of traditional martial arts, then please go ahead and subscribe. Your support would really help me out. As always, I wanna thank you guys for the hard work, and thank you for the hard work yet to be done. I'll see you next time.